Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 109 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Right, so we've just started work for the week. Uh, Rowan is inside the boat and he's going to be fairing the insides of all the bottoms of the frames. He's doing that to prepare them for making templates for the floors which are going to be cast in bronze. I'm going to talk more about them later on. I'm about to start working on the fashion pieces and basically they will form the connection between the planking and the transom. All right, so here behind me are the fashion pieces. Now, they're very similar to the frames of the boat, except they go right at the stern up against the transom and they're raked, so they're at an angle, whereas the rest of the frames are plumb if you're looking at the boat from the side. Because they are at an angle, uh, that means they've got a much bigger bevel on them, and so cutting them out on the ship saw was a lot harder. We cut them out and made them when we did the last frame raising, um, but I've just had to clean them up a bit because cutting that bevel was so hard that uh, there was quite a discrepancy between the different pieces and it was all a bit messy. So I've now laid out the fashion piece onto the lofting floor. This bit of plywood here is an extra bit of lofting floor I put down some time ago so I could expand the transom. Expanding the transom and working out the bevels for the transom and the fashion piece was probably one of the hardest parts of the lofting. Now the fashion piece is cut, I've laid it out on the lofting floor so I can transfer the waterline marks, which will help us to install the fashion piece at its correct height and position. So we've got the fashion pieces all cleaned up. Uh, we're going to install them in the same way that we did the frames, just for the sake of consistency. So that means um, letting in the heel of the fashion piece into the center line by half an inch. And now we're going to clamp on a beam onto the top of the stern post, uh, which is going to help us to support the um, fashion pieces while we mark out and cut the pockets for them. When we cut the pockets for the frames, we were able to do it with a router, but the bottom of the fashion piece is actually really close to one of the frames, so we're not able to get a router in there. So what we're gonna do is just use a drill to hog out some of the material and mark the depth. And I've got a forcing a bit here, which I've uh, sort of added a bit of wood to and drawn a line on it to mark the half inch that we want to drill to. So we'll basically just drill a bunch of holes and then chisel out the remainder. Well, it works. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Yeah. Don't run it too fast, too long, because it will overheat and blunt. 
Yeah. I believe you drilled outside of the pocket. You serious? I'm serious. Shit. <laughs> That's probably okay actually, because that bit will probably get carved away. If not, it's the perfect size for a plug. <laughs> not gonna look very professional on video there, is it? Let's just get some blue tape and put it over. Yeah. I was planning on staying a little bit longer and helping Leo out a little bit with the next bits of the boat, but unfortunately I've been called away. But that just means I'll have to come back another time. Thanks uh, a lot for all your help. It's um, been really good to have you around and much appreciated. I think I've learned more than you have gotten out of me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hopefully I can put some videos out on my channel. Uh, the Rowmeister. <laughs> I made it when I was uh, 12, I think. So there's some good content on there. <laughs> So we have a small problem. I kind of messed up by leaving the fashion pieces balanced a little bit precariously while I went off. And uh, actually the port side fashion piece fell off the top of the boat and unfortunately landed pretty hard right on its top where there was a lot of leverage and actually broke one of the trunnels. The fashion piece is still in one piece but you can see uh, where it's sort of bent a little bit on one of the joints where that one trunnel is broken. And I'm not at all surprised that it broke. Uh, it was, fell from quite a height and um, there was a lot of leverage on it in the way that it fell. It's important to remember, I think, that the trunnels are not that structurally important. Um, once the planks are on and there's a bunch of fastenings through the futtocks, the trunnels really won't be doing much then. Um, their main purpose really is to keep the frames in the right shape as they're put into the boat. They are pretty strong being black locust, um, but there was only two trunnels in this particular joint. Anyway, it's not the end of the world at all, uh, it's just a little bit frustrating because now I've got to repair that fashion piece before I can install it. And I was hoping to install them today, but I'll have to wait till tomorrow now. Somebody in the glass And she's smiling
So the next thing for me is to uh, get ready to fit the internal stringers and the beam shelves or clamps as they're known as in the US. So last night I laid this baton along the port side on the outside of the frames. I'm basically just checking that the frames are roughly fair at this stage. The biggest challenge I think is going to be actually physically maneuvering the stringers inside the boat because at the moment there's no gaps in the boat that are big enough to get them in. Uh, except for coming in through the uh, stern uh, where the transom will be. So I'll be thinking about how I'm going to deal with that uh, as I get the frames ready.
What were you doing just then? I was taking the screws out of the frame that was holding the... <laughs> it was holding up the blankets and tarps that was protecting the table because we put more epoxy on it to make it more waterproof. Uh, do you want some blue f <laughs> My lips are going all numb from the um, cold. So the next part of the project is to put some big structural timbers on the inside of the frames. Now these are going to be the build stringer and the beam shelf and they're going to be big thick beams that run from the front of the boat all the way to the back. The build stringer runs about halfway up the frames and that provides a lot more strength and rigidity in that area. The beam shelf or the shear clamp rests up here against the top of the inside of the frames and as well as adding a lot of strength to the top of the hull it also supports the deck structure which will be going on later on. I've been checking to see whether there's any frames which are clearly out of alignment with the rest. We took a lot of care when lofting and installing them um, but there's always going to be some little discrepancies in marking up and such like so uh, there were a couple of frames on this port side that needed moving just a little bit and now I'm going to do the same on the starboard side and then I'll be ready to actually start fairing the inside ready to take the beam shelf or the shear clamp and the build stringer. All right, well, that's all we've got time for right now, but thanks a lot for watching, and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference, and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.